For this next week's reset, we are going to have Grandmaster Nightfalls back in the game. Along with this, they also reduced the light level requirement for Grandmaster Nightfalls, so this will be the most accessible Grandmaster Nightfalls we've ever had in Destiny. Because of this, tons of new players will be trying out Grandmasters for the very first time. In this video, I hope to teach you one build for each class that you can be running in Grandmaster Nightfalls. The dim links for these builds will be put in the pinned comment. If you would like to leave a like and sub, that would be greatly appreciated, along with some feedback in the comments below. Thank you. Starting out with our first class, Warlock. The recent change of all mods being unlocked for every account, we will be taking full advantage of this in our build. This is going to be a stasis turret build for Warlock, because stasis turrets are one of the strongest things in the game, because they have the ability to slow down enemies, and they keep adds from getting to your team. This is essential for Grandmasters, as every enemy will basically kill you in two shots. Starting out with the exotic of choice here, we have Osmiomancies. As Osmiomancies gives you two cold snap grenades, allow you to have two turrets in your inventory at a time. Now, now let's get into the aspects you're going to be running for the Shadebinder Warlock. Starting out, we have Glacial Harvest. Glacial Harvest drops a Stasis Shard around a frozen target, which we'll be doing a lot of with this build. Stasis Shards will get us charged with light with certain mods in our build. Second aspect we have is Bleak Watchers, as this is what creates our grenades into Stasis Turrets. If you charge your grenade by holding the grenade button down, you will be able to throw it out as a stasis turret, freezing enemies over and over again. This allows you to hold off certain choke points so adds will not get close to you. Now let's get to the fragments. Starting out, we have Whisper of Fissure. Whisper of Fissure essentially makes it so whenever you shatter a frozen target, it'll do more damage and burst in a larger radius. Next up, we have Whisper of Durance. Whisper of Durance states that our ability slows last longer on a target. Essentially, keeping any target slowed by our stasis turret slowed for longer. Third fragment we have up is Whisper of Conduction. Whisper of Conduction essentially makes our stasis shards track to us so we don't have to put ourselves in danger to get charged with light. Lastly, we have Whisper of Shards. Whisper of Shards, every time we shatter a stasis crystal, in this case it would be enemies frozen by our stasis turrets, we'll get increased grenade recharge rate. With all the fragments and aspects sorted out, let's get to this armor. Now, for this build, you're going to need three solar armor pieces along with one stasis, and the last armor piece can be whatever you like. As for this build, the three solar pieces are going to be using firepower mods in order to get your grenades back faster each time you throw a grenade. The one stasis piece is going to be using elemental shards. This is so your glacial harvest shards turn into elemental wells. And the last and final mod is, is going to be elemental charge. What this does is it turns the elemental shards that we pick up into charged with light. So essentially the loop is... You freeze something, pick up the shard from Glacial Harvest, it turns it into a charge with light. The next time you throw a grenade, you'll get the grenade back faster because of firepower. Now, the first weapon I'd recommend pairing with this build is going to be Wither Horde, as you can use the Weak and Clear to debuff champions as well as bosses. And you're also to, if you need to, put on Unstoppable Grenade Launcher, and this will just be a huge menace in GMs. Along with that, you can pair it with something like either an auto rifle, or if you need anti-barrier, a pulse rifle, and you can get through any champion that you need. Now, for example, in Warden of Nothing, we have all three champions. So you can run Unstoppable GL, anti-barrier bow, then for the third champion mod, you can run the new artifact mod, Lord Kelvin's Basilisk, as this will apply a overload effect to your stasis turrets. And if you don't need a third champion mod, you can just run Lucent Finisher for that extra heavy ammo. Next up, we have our Titan build. Our Titan build is going to be taking advantage of the exotic Ursa Furiosa. Essentially what this exotic does is, while blocking with your Sentinel Shield Super, you gain super energy back for how much damage you block. What this allows you to do is, it allows you to chain back-to-back -back supers for your team to easily clear out rooms of enemies. One thing you have to keep in mind too is that in GMs, enemies are doing a ton of damage per shot, so you're going to be getting lots of super energy back very quickly. First of all, let's get into this subclass. So obviously starting out with, you're going to have to be running the Sentinel Shield Super, as this is what you need to rock for the Ursa Furiosa to work. Now for the aspects you should be running is Controlled Demolitionist, as this makes enemies volatile for every ability kill or hit allowing you to blow up hordes of enemies very easily. Next aspect you should be running is going to be Bastion, as this gives you an overshield every time you cast your super. And this overshield is also applied to your allies. This aspect also allows you to cast your barricade to give yourself an overshield. Now, you can run whatever grenade you like for this build, but personally, I like running Vortex Grenade. Now, let's get into the fragments. First up, we have Echo Persistence. Echo Persistence basically extends the duration of all buffs. So, in this build, you're going to be extending your duration of the overshields. Secondly, we're going to run Echo of Remnants, as this extends your duration of Vortex Grenade, Void Wall, Void Spikes, and Axion Bolt. 
And if pairing this with Vortex Nades, it allows you to do a ton more damage with your grenade. Lastly, Echo of Undermining, this is for your 15% debuff with your Vortex Grenade. Now that we have our subclass set up, let's get into the armor pieces. Now for the armor, you will need to have three different types of affinities. You'll need to have one Solar and two Void. This is so we can fit our combat mods into certain places. Now one, I recommend having your Titan Mark as Void. This is so you can fit mods like Reaping Wellmaker in there without taking up too much space for other mods. Now the other armor piece I would recommend having a certain one is going to be your helmet for solar. This is so you can run Ashes to Asset along with Bountiful Wells. Now your last void piece does not really matter where it goes. So essentially the total makeup of combat mods is going to be Bountiful Wells, Elemental Ordinance, Well of Tenacity, Font of Wisdom, and Reaping Wellmaker. Bountiful Wells essentially makes it so you get two wells for the price of one. This allows you to have more uptime with your wells. Elemental Ordinance allows you to create a void well with your void grenade. Well of Tenacity basically gives you a 40% damage reduction every time you pick up a void well. And pairing that with Bountiful Wells, you'll be having void wells basically on the ground most of the time. Infanta Wisdom essentially gives you 100% intellect for 30 seconds after picking up a well. Now with this build, it's more versatile with the weapons you can use with it. For example, if you want to use Wither Horde, go ahead. If you want to use Arbalist, go ahead. This leaves open a bunch of opportunities to use different weapons for different champion mods. Now the hardest one to fit in there will obviously be Unstoppable GL considering it takes up 7 out of the 10 energy. But if you do decide to run a GL, make sure you run Breach and Clear. Otherwise, I would recommend running Lucent Finisher with Advanced Scout, as what Advanced Scout does is it gives a 10% damage bonus to your teammates to champions that you stun. Last up, we have the Hunter build. Now this build is kind of more of a staple of GMs, as most Hunters who do GMs tend to run this build, if not a slightly different variant of this build. This build taking advantage of Omni Oculus. Essentially what this build does is Omni Oculus gives everyone you make invisible a damage resist. Along with this, every teammate you make invisible with a smoke bomb gives you half of your smoke bomb back. So making two teammates invisible will give you a full charge of your melee back. All right, going into the subclass. Now for the super, you have two choices. First one is gonna be Mobius, which basically gives you two volleys of three shots of arrows that will weaken and apply volatile to any targets that are in its radius. Or you can go with Deadfall, which is a single shot tether that lasts longer than Mobius Quiver. Next up, for the aspects of this build, we have Vanishing Step, which makes it so you go invisible when you dodge. Secondly, we're gonna be running Trapper's Ambush, so that way we're able to make our teammates invisible from our smoke bomb. Now keep in mind, you don't have to do the quick fall ability to make your teammates invisible, you can simply throw it down with your melee ability. Now, you'll wanna be using the Gambler's Dodge, so each time you go invisible, you gain your melee ability back. All right, now let's get to the fragments. First up, we have Echo Persistence, which in this build, it'll just increase your duration of invisibility. Secondly, we have Echo of Undermining, as this will just apply a weakened debuff to any target you hit with your Void Grenade. Lastly, we have Echo of Obscurity. This will just make you invis after doing a finisher, which is very useful because we have Lucent Finisher, a mod that allows you to get heavy ammo on champion finishers. Now, going into the armor, I would recommend running two arc pieces, two void pieces, and one solar piece. This is so we can fit certain mods in this build. Now, the mods we're going to be using to warrant this is going to be Radiant Light, Powerful Friends, Well of Tenacity, Reaping Wellmaker, and Bountiful Wells. Radiant Light and Powerful Friends are simply only being used in this build for the boost in strength and mobility, as these will aid you in keeping yourself in viz as well as your teammates. Reaping Wellmaker essentially gives you a Void Well on a kill after using your dodge ability. Pairing this with Well Tenacity, this will be giving you a 40% damage resist. Using Bountiful Wells, this will give you two Void Wells after using Reaping Wellmaker. Now, for the rest of the armor, you can really put the mods wherever you feel like, but I do recommend running one of the cheaper combat mods on your cloak, so that way you're able to fit in a mod like Lucent Finisher and Advanced Scout, or even the other artifact mod, Lord Kelvin's Basilisk, so that way you can get Overload Void Nades. Now, a weapon I'd pair with this build is going to be Arvalist. The reason for that is because it has built-in anti-barrier, so that way you don't have to waste a mod slot on your arms for an anti-barrier. Now, unfortunately, unstop-wise, this only leaves you with hand cannon, which aren't too great for GMs, but may work. Luckily the gameplay loop of this build should be very simple, it's just simply making your teammates invis with your smoke bombs and then dodge you to become invisible yourself to get the smoke bombs back if you did not get full energy from your melee. Thank you for watching today's video, if you could leave some feedback to the comments below that would be greatly appreciated. Thank you.